Welcome to March Madness Minute number 16, and today we're going to look at Google Classroom. We're going to sign up and take a quick tour. So a little bit to know about Google Classroom, it's a free learning management system. It's a little more on the simplistic side than things out there like Canvas or Schoology, but sometimes simple is good. Uh, you do need an at Canvas account to log in, so parents don't have a way to get into this information unless they're looking with their student, and it would need to be students from our district that are in your classroom. Uh, things that are happening in Google Classroom are typically also happening in Google Drive. It's a prettier, easier version to maneuver. It's easier to push out assignments. It's easier to collect assignments. And it allows you to grade and leave comments in live documents. So to start, we're going to classroom.google.com and you're going to log in with your account. Once you do that, it's a good time to bookmark your page. So it's going to show up in your bookmark bar. And when you log in, you're going to see these tiles and these tiles represent classes that you are a teacher of as well if, as uh, classes you're a student of. And if you don't like the little blue profile picture, just remember if you go to Google Plus, you can create an account and choose your image there. So the very first time you go to this website, it's going to say, are you a teacher or are you a student? So please click on I'm a teacher. And if you plan on using this with your students, you'll need to email me so we can get you approved on the back end for the tech department. And once I'm here, and this is going to be true whether I'm a teacher or a student, I'm going to that same website, classroom.google.com, and I'm going to click on the plus sign. As a teacher, you're going to create a class, which is what I'm going to do today. And as a student, you're going to click join a class to put in a code. And if you'd like to click join class, if you want to be a student in my class, then you can see what things look like on the student side, because that is hard to test as you get further down the road. So I'm going to hit create class. I'm going to title my class March Madness. And I don't need to put a section, um, any section information here. I could, or I could put um, period one, and then things are going to be in order. That might be a little bit better on the back side for you. So I'll hit create, and it'll take a moment uh, to build that class, but that's everything. Now my class is created. I'm done. Um, we'll take a little tour here. So this is. Um, the title information of my class. I can change, uh, select a different theme if I don't want these purple circles, or they've just recently added the ability to upload your own photo. So maybe you have a class photo that you'd like to put there. Um, this ribbon right here uh, has three options. And let's start at the back side, actually. We're going to click the About page. So this could be information about your class. So um, You could type information here. You could put your room number. Here's a link where students can email you, as well as a link to the Google Drive folder for your class. Um, because like I said, everything's also happening in Google Drive, and we'll look at that in a moment. Um, you can also upload materials. So if I want to upload materials, I can upload things from my hard drive on whatever computer I'm logged into. I can upload from Google Drive add a YouTube video or a link to a website. So this about page would be good to upload things such as a syllabus or a rubric that I want to use year round or um, anything that I want students to have access to throughout the year. These are kind of the big picture ideas. And that's the about page. The student side um, you cannot invite students because students don't have email turned on right now. Um, so how students have to attach to your class is going to that classroom.google. They'd hit that same plus sign to join a class. And then this is the code you would give them. And so that code's automatically created. It's going to uh, always be on your student page. So even if you have a student come in, Three months later, you could go to your student page and give them that code. Once students uh, join your class with the code, you're going to see a list of those names here. The other thing that's important about the student page is the option to allow students to post or comment. So I can have students post, which means creating a new topic to talk, talk about, or I can have them comment, which is replying to a comment, or I can turn off the ability to do either one. 
So I might turn this off until I've talked to my students a little more about digital citizenship. Um, maybe we're watching a movie and I want them to talk about the movie as we're watching it and look for something specific. And maybe I post that as a, as a post and then I allow them to comment on my post. So this changes on the fly. The other, um, yeah, so we can't invite, um, the actions does have another option. So if you have a student that's posting things, um, that maybe aren't appropriate, you can mute them on this page as well. I just don't have that ability since I don't have any students right now. The other part is stream. So let's go back to this ribbon and stream is where most of the action is happening. So on the stream side, you have two options. You can create an announcement and just like before, we can upload from our hard drive, Google drive, YouTube, or add a link. And if I have multiple classes, here's where I could have that one announcement go to several classes all at once. So here's where I could um, maybe give information about there's a field trip coming up and I could upload my field trip slip. Um, here's where I could remind people about homework that's due, but these are just announcements to your class. And I'm going to check my settings. I said only teacher can post. I'm going to say students can comment. And what is your favorite tech tool? And that way people can comment on that. And I'm going to say post. And now you should uh, also see a place where you can make a comment. So that's an announcement. If I click on assignment, there's, it's going to have me, give me the same uploading options, except for an announcement. I'm not, there's no place to grade it. An assignment does have a place to grade. So we'll look more at assignments as we go down the road. Um, but I just want you to know it's here. We'll look at, at that in more detail because there are several options. The other piece that you really want to know is navigation. So this little hamburger icon up in the corner, I can click on it and it can take me home. That's where all my tiles were. And that's where if I wanted to go to a class, I'm clicking on the name of the class. If I click on the folder, it's taking me to Google Drive. And if your class is over at the end of the semester, you can archive the class. So I'm going to click on this uh, little hamburger icon again. The other thing you'll see is it says teaching. These are all the classes I'm teaching and enrolled all the classes I'm enrolled in. And if I keep scrolling, Here's where my archived classes went to and settings allows you to turn off notifications. So if you're getting too many notifications, you're going to want to go into settings. Uh, if I go into teaching, I can click on assignments and it lists all the uh, assignments that I've assigned. It shows me how many are done, how many are not done. And I can just click on these to go look at those right now if I chose to. And once I'm done, if the student is just not going to turn it in, uh, I can click on these three buttons to mark as reviewed. So it goes to my reviewed page and gets it off of kind of my to-do list. And the same thing for students. Students can go to assignments. It looks like I've got a long list of assignments to do. Uh oh. So um, these are the older assignments. And if I scroll down, these are the newer assignments. And I can look at what I have to do versus, again, what I've done. So the student and teacher side are, are pretty similar. And this is where they could also see comments and where they could see the grades that you assign them. So that's a quick tour of Google Classroom, and we'll look at more in depth at assignments tomorrow. Thank you.